The following is not a new video. We have repaired the audio and enhanced the video. We are now proud to present Viking Martial Arts Volume 4, The Hidden Axe Throw, as it was meant to be experienced. Hey there fellow warriors, welcome to another legendary episode from YouTube channel Thane Thrand. Size axe 
that you know you're not going to be able to get to the guy quickly and attack him if he did hit his foot. You'd probably have to throw sideways if you were going to try that, but the guy would be so far away it's not worth it. So what we've come up with is we assume that it's like an attack to the leg, but without a revolution and thrown directly into the foot. He could be standing here with his shield, but he wouldn't be able to move the shield down in time to stop it. So what we're going to do is go ahead and, and take a whack at it and see how this works. Like he just pulled this out, had it. What we'll do is just take this, uh, act like we're doing an attack to the leg or something, which you'll think the shield can cover that. But we're going to just let it slide out of the hand and go into the foot. Ooh. Just like that. So Damn. what would happen, you'd come down, toss, boom, the foot's now injured. When that foot's injured, even if he had his shield, let's say he had his skeleton, his foot's now hit. If he dropped that shield trying to defend against that, you'd have your attack just like in the book. Yeah. So I can see how that could work in that manner. Just the flipping end over end, no way you're going to hit the foot because the handle is always going to be in the way when it's coming down to hit. The yeah. only way you can do is sideways. If you threw one of those sideways type shots, like let's say out of uh, the Vikings we brought up earlier where you cut the braid, you would have to be so far back that you would be able to get there in time to, yes. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's the way it was done. I think that we figured it out here, and it could have been an axe like this, and we'll experiment with some different axes. Yeah, let's try a few. All right. We're here with uh, a, a slightly more modern, actually not slightly, it's a very much more modern uh, version of the hand axe, the tomahawk. This is an SOG tomahawk. Um, you can do the exact same technique, and this I think is a little better for contemporary society. I, I think the technique that's being taught in Anthony Cummins' book and that we read about in the sagas is, is valuable even today. You can even use it with a weapon like this. Uh, as Thrand said, you know, the idea here is it's, it's from an inside to out motion, like you're chopping at the leg, and you just kind of let it go into the foot. And you kind of squat down into it to shorten the distance into it. So you're shortening the distance of that squat. It kind of just sticks it right in. And if I was standing here to reiterate the thing. Yeah, there you go. There that you little, go. That would have been straight through my foot. Either foot that's forward. I don't and know see. all it takes after that. If and he, he's actually quite out of range if he does it properly. Right. If it's pop. He can even be defending. Throw it into my foot. Pop. Down, you know, I'm at this kind of situation going, and then clip right it's, it's all probably going to totally distract him if this goes through his foot but this is this is okay you know now we've shown you to do that left handed as an off hand thing but in, in your contemporary society this may not be the case where you have something you know as a regular sized axe either hand you might have it as a right handed just a, a, a single weapon right hand and you can throw it right in that pretty well. thank you my lord it's a very difficult technique, so if you want to do this, be sure to practice it. Yeah, that's something that Thran could tell you a lot about. Uh, we, as you said to me before, that this this would be a practice technique. This is not something he just did miraculously. We believe oh, he probably. No, no, no. If this was done in that saga, he did it like that. I think he practiced. I think he did like we did and stood out here and just kept doing it and doing it until he just because you want to flip it the mind wants to flip yeah it. you want to but you can't because the distance you don't have enough time to even if you try to sharpen the revolution you're not going to do it even if you try to get the handle out of the way sideways it's going to be way too far Abs away. no you can't and and your natural instinct your mind's going to tell you over and over this is going to get frustrating the more you practice it you're gonna you're gonna want to break your wrist over and flip and that's one thing you don't want to do thran taught me how to do this and we're trying to teach you don't let the wrist break open just don't let it break over, just just let it go. You just do your chop and let go. Chop and let go. And chop and let go. It just, it does it on its own. It'll come right out of your hand. Uh, very natural. All right, another idea I have is that he might have had a one-handed ax that could have been used with a sword and shield that has a nice reach and a handle on it. So you can reach out, get people, and you can also defend with it because you wouldn't want to block with the edge of your sword. It's not really a great fence. A lot of berserker would always have a spear or an axe as the offhand or something, something like this, not necessarily a Francisca or throwing axe or something like that. So if he was fighting and the guy did not expect it, because it's one of these things that kind of reaches out and gets you. He's got a longer handle, and the guy wouldn't expect him to be able to swing over a certain distance low to hit his leg or something. Well, let's say right here the foot was there, and he takes it, and he doesn't expect this. He moves his shield down, but leaves his foot open. He can throw it directly into the foot while defending Ooh. himself. 
And at that point, you'd get your kill right there. And this was done with a big axe, but look how much further away that reach was. So he's oh, standing yeah. here, he goes down, or put the other foot forward. Actually, you'd have your shield. All right, you reach down your shield to stop it, but it hits your foot. You didn't expect that. It goes through the foot, boom. I step in and take yeah, the blow, or however the blow would come in well. I mean, however I could get it over that that's shield. That's beautiful, Brad. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I was trying beautiful. to explain, is I think it could have been a big axe like this, not necessarily a throwing yeah. axe or a small axe. But heck, you could use anything. I mean, heck, I could pull out my sacks and just throw it directly into that same foot. See, I hit the exact that's same like spot. That's like throwing a boy knife in nope. somebody's foot. Sometimes it doesn't hit exactly right, but throw it directly into the foot, and it would be the same effect, because he doesn't realize you're throwing out in front of you. So you're right. sitting here, you throw out in front of you. If it hits that foot, he's going to immediately And be... the way it's supposed to look, is it's supposed to look like you're taking a slice at him or taking a swing Right, at to him, he sees this. So if I had a spear, His I could show you something really good. To... But I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Right. Well, anyway, all I can say about this, this whole episode here uh, is it reminds me of something that happened to me in real life. Whoa. I was at an event, and I was fighting Lord, Lord Gordon Redwall. And he had a him. spear with a cross piece. I mean, it was basically a... It's a, a wing, yeah. Yeah, it was a crux, just like this. And he was fighting me, of course, SCA spear. And it's not legal to actually throw anything, but he was sitting here doing this number, thrusting at me, and I parried. I moved. But he only had so much reach, and I was trying to stay out of his range, out of his reach. So as you see, this thing can't reach you in the camera there. But all of a sudden, magically, the spear hit me in the face, and I didn't see what he did. All I saw was a spear. And above. suddenly you're declared dead. Right. And this is the ma magical you know thing it? we have here. We have the weapon leaping out and getting somebody. Just like if you had a sword and you're swinging, and then all of a sudden you move back thinking this thing won't reach you, and boom, it's, he it got lodges a Just little. lets it go a little far enough to hit the guy in the face. But we're not allowed to do that, but he did it to me as a dirty right. trick. But, but we've it, I still call it a kill. In real combat. Right, I call that a kill because if you were just that far from the guy's face and you know you just take that risk and let go of it because he just stepped out a little bit out of range thinking that he, you can't get him and it's going to nail him, you'd do it. Yeah, sure you would. Especially in single combat. I believe it. I really do. So I honestly see, I, I, I don't see, see the sword throwing as often or sax throwing, you know, like at somebody while you're fighting normally because yeah. you lose a weapon if you're fighting with two weapons. That was very uncommon anyway. But the spear... I definitely see that with a shield on your back and a backup sword. I could see somebody doing that single combat. Sure thing, yeah. You and, know, you and, know, and it I, worked. I mean, I sat there. This thing, I thought I had this much from my face, and the next thing I know, you know what? I'm dead. I, I think it hit I me think, so hard in the face it rocked my shoulders. I really shoulders think our experiments head. with with the the axe to the foot technique from Andy be the Cook same the thing. He he thinks you can't hit his leg because right the shield's there. in the way, and then all of a sudden it's through your foot. It's it, the same kind of technique, it. and then you take advantage yeah, of the... It, it, you show, it really shows that it's it's viable from any angle, whether you're going to throw it to the face, to the foot. If, if you're close enough to let it go and give it that short little flight... That's basically what the technique you're is. You're using inertia to carry it And it, it could right be in. either hand or whatever. You could pull something out and do that. Yep. That's simple. Even if it didn't hit the foot, if you threw a knife at somebody's foot, he's going to... I think I think you that, know I mean in real yeah. life you're going to distract him long enough that, that you get his foot, he's going to be scared because you think sure and Miyamoto yeah. Musashi said something about that you distraction cause that, yeah you cause that level of fear where he has to step back you won you've got right. him hey, if you get if you get the surprise that's it surprise but that, that's, I, I think this was a good episode yeah I, I do too I, I really did I had a great time I think we proved something out of his book that's absolutely true and it even works today uh, most definitely well with almost we, any weapon that's right We'd like to thank you for joining us again, guys, and look out for uh, lesson number five. That's coming up real soon. Farewell. Farewell.